and went this way. I should have brought a different lens. It is what it is. I am in Nashville right now at the Graduate Hotel. This is a pretty freaking cool spot. And I'm here for the DJ Collective. My friends uh, Brian B, DJ Brian B, uh, Jason Janai, and Joe Bunn um, asked me to come speak at this thing. They asked me to be the, the first main stage speaker. It took me a while to realize how much trust they put in me to do that. Uh, in fact, it was like right as I walked off stage, I was like, oh my God, this is insane. And there's like 170 DJs here. Like the, the best event DJs you're gonna find. And um, I got to share with them some things that I've learned over the years. Um, well, let me tell you a story. A few weeks ago, I had a project die on the vine. It was a, uh, a packaging project for a watch company. And I was so excited about this project. And a couple of days before we were supposed to confirm final quantity, set up a contract, do all that stuff, a uh, client decided to go in a different direction. And I, I'm, I'm not gonna say I wasn't disappointed, right? I was disappointed because I wanted to see this thing that I had come up with, that I had created, put out into the world. I was excited because I dug the product and wanted to be associated with it. But here's the super cool thing. I can walk away from it feeling good about my relationship with that client, about my part of that experience, because I got paid for my creative work. That may sound super obvious to you, or it may be like, it may be really hard to understand because what I do looks a lot like I'm selling paper or concrete or copper or whatever it is I use. Um, but I don't sell a product. I sell me. A product comes along with it. But the reality is people come to me. I think most of the world is gonna to come to a place where if you want a human to show up and work with their brain for you, and by show up I mean like, you want a real human to apply their point of view to what you do. I think that that's going to require a pretty serious premium. Man, watch what Dolly has done with, is it Dolly, the, the uh, AI generative art, right? Watch what they've done. Uh, the newest version of Photoshop has some tools in it that like eliminate the need to be good at editing photos to get some of the most technically challenging parts of photos. Not the super nuanced stuff, that's the stuff where that's the stuff where a human has to show up, right? But most people in the world, they don't want the, the excellent kind, the special kind, the, the unique kind, they want the regular kind. And the robots will do the regular kind better than we can very soon, if not already. It is our job to show up as our full, complete human selves because if someone is already going to invest in a human, at a DJ conference, right, there are playlist builders that can build playlists that are technically, like from a, does it get people dancing standpoint or whatever metric you wanna use, technically they might be as good or better than some of the DJs here are going to produce, again, from a technical perspective, beat match, whatever it is. What the algorithms cannot do is show up with a unique human perspective that a person has, uh, all of their, experiences, their traumas, their delights, their biases, all of the things that make them a complete human being, show up and apply it to the dance floor. So to pay to get a human in the room, to put their human perspective on it, I think that's gonna have to continue to become more and more of a luxury as, uh, as the robots take over, man, as they kill um, the cheap local photographer's business, the cheap local DJ's business. Um, and a lot of other businesses too. So I was here this week to speak about getting paid for creative. A few years ago, kind of at the beginning of this journey for me, I had what I thought was like the, my big break in an inquiry. <clears throat> and I didn't really have a, a strong process at that point. And 
So I got the inquiry. I, uh, I never got to know the client's names. Uh, they had an NDA signed, so the planner just told me the details. And I made a proposal. I actually made like a three-tier proposal, a high, medium, low thing. I don't do that anymore. I made a proposal for them. And um, I was really proud of it. At the top level, that proposal was the biggest dollar amount I had ever sent out at that point. Um, it was the most ambitious conceptually. I put like 20 hours into this proposal. And the only feedback I got was essentially, hey, this thing the couple said they wanted, the direction they wanted to go in terms of style, that isn't actually what they want. You know, they just, you're not a fit. Um, in fact, I uh, had introduced myself to this planner as being the opposite of another stationer. And uh, the planner goes, you know, after talking to this couple and showing them what you have, we realize they're better suited for that other station. Um, and in the beginning, the thing that I was frustrated with, the thing that I wanted changed, was I realized like that I didn't get paid for my time. 20 or so hours, I didn't get paid for. But over the next year or two or three, I started to realize that the problem with that scenario was not that I didn't get compensated for my time. That's a given. The bigger, more important challenge was I had not established authority and trust in my process. I didn't have one, of course I didn't. And uh, therefore the client just, they weren't invested in my perspective. They just wanted a perspective. So now uh, I charge upfront um, for people to buy this, what's between my ears, my, my perspective on their event. And so even if the project doesn't happen, even if they walk away, whatever happens, I know that that client has valued the thing that I value about my work. It's been amazing, the feedback that I've gotten here. And I, I, I really, I'll continue to talk about this, but the, here's, here's the deal. You may have noticed I've been absent for a while. There are a lot of reasons for that, but at its core is, I realized I was making videos that were mostly sexy press videos and process videos, and yeah, those get a lot of views, those get response, <sighs> but they weren't leaning into the thing that I actually really love about what I do, which is connecting with people, telling stories. I make holy shit stationary for brave and daring clients so that they can be known and remembered by the people that matter to them. It's what I do, it's, it's, it's not a marketing message. I get, ultimately it is. But it's, it wasn't crafted by some wordsmithing of somebody trying to figure out how to sell things. It was me trying to figure out how to share my heart with the people I want to serve. That I had to develop this way of talking about what I do. And I haven't been talking about that here. So that's, that's what I'm doing now. I'm gonna talk about that here more. I don't know how often I can show up and do that. I've gotta figure out how to build this process into my work process again. And I've gotta figure out how to tell better stories, which might take a little bit of planning. You know, I got up on stage yesterday with uh, three lines in my notes because uh, they had announced three takeaways that I was gonna give. I gave it to them, but um, I typically improvise these things. And uh, like I promise them, I give them these takeaways. I need to bring these phrases back. One of them, I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of this one. Just before I left, I made uh, a bunch of cards. If you're not pissing people off, you're not exciting anyone either. When you stand on your convictions, whatever they are, there are going to be people who don't get it. I'm not for everyone. And uh, there are people that look at me and go, you're stupid. Uh, that I demand time from my clients, that I charge what I charge, that I charge a creative fee, that I expect to show up at every event that I do because I need to install the menus and the place cards and the signage. There are people that think that that's all ridiculous and that's good. Because if there was no one looking at the work that I do going, why the hell is he doing that? Then I would have no one super excited about the things that I and passionate about. But because I'm focused on this holy shit moment for brave and daring clients that help them be known and remembered by their people, the people that want exactly that know exactly who to turn to. And it's pretty awesome. I'm 
really thankful to get to do this. I'm also really horrible at getting footage of these things, the B-roll, all that crap. Uh, this thing is the coolest event that I go to. Uh, DJs are a cool breed, and we get to see uh, the top of the craft. They do these after parties, these, these dinners, and all these different things at night, and they bring in just some of the most amazing DJs you've ever encountered. And um, it's wild because nobody's dancing. It's a bunch of DJs standing around the booth, eyes like saucers, just trying to figure out how they do what they do, just obsessing over technique and storytelling. They're my people. I love this place so much. I am so thankful to uh, Brian and Joe and Jason for trusting me with this. You guys are really special and I'm really thankful to have had this opportunity. I'm also really thankful to be in Nashville. This is a cool town. I've never seen so much live music on a Monday night in my life. This, is a, this, is, this has been amazing. Thank you guys. And uh, if you are creative and interested in hearing about what this looks like, how to get paid for what's between your ears. It's something I'm talking about a lot more now. I've got a link down below on how you can hang with me and talk about that and figure out how to make it work for you. I don't know when I'll see you again. Hopefully it's soon. I know that's up to me. I miss you guys. Thank you. Bye. <sighs> I'm exhausted, but my heart is full. It's time to go home.